Greetings, salutations and hallucinations, those team defenders. From today is not going to be vaping with Uncle Jojo. I had some questions about some of my play parties back here, and I thought I would address that. So this is non-vape related. Um, <clears throat> and before I get into it, let's just go ahead and say that when you ask opinions on things, everybody's got one, kind of like armpits. Uh, sometimes they stink. And it kind of really depends on the person, really, to be honest with you. You know, people can give you advice on things. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's just not good for you. You know, I've had people tell me, you need to fall in love. <laughs> it's grand. For me, not so much. You see the thing? You know, I guess if, you know, she's in love with you, that, that, that would be grand. If she really likes you, that would be pretty good. Could be grand. If she's even attracted to you, then that has the possibility but if you're like me and she and she's not then I found out the hard way to love well I don't, I don't recommend it personally because I've had bad luck with it but be that as it may we can talk on the points that people have asked me I got a few people sent me some prize some PMs and such whatnots about some of the things that I play with here this is a few of my little toys I've got uh, one of them is this darling here as you can see, that holster sits down between me and my belt. That is an inside your waistband holder from On Your Six Designs. And back here at the back, there are my mag carriers. Just more comfortable that way. This is my Glock 27. Like most firearms, uh, Glock manufactures several sizes, being a full size, which is what Olga is. My Glock 22 40 cal is a full size. I have a compact, and this is the Glock, which is the Glock 23. This is the Glock 27 subcompact. And as the name implies, it's just a smaller gun. Now, among the little things I've done to this is very, very snug. Put a little paint of the numbers to bring them out to make them prettier. Purely eye candy, just something I wanted to do. Internally, the gun's bone stock. I haven't done anything to it at all. Externally, I've put uh, extended takedown levers here on the side. Makes it just makes it easier. And they are chrome with chrome pins. That's all again, just just eye candy. <clears throat> the, the extended takedown lever does make it a lot easier to take the gun apart for cleaning. Extended slide lock just makes it much easier to manipulate that to release the slide. And the extended mag release in red, which is a little bit of eye candy, but also makes it a lot easier to drop that magazine. Other than that, I have the mag, Pierce mag extensions, which these give you a place to put your pinky. As you can see, you really the base, the mag stock, the standard mag sits pretty much flush with this, so there's nowhere to put a pinky. So this gives you a place to put your pinky for a little bit better grip. If you like me, and you have a fairly decently large hand, and it does give me an extra round. So instead of the standard nine, I got ten. Now on the flip side, I did replace the standard stock Glock sights with what's called big dot double dots. Instead of having a, side, a dot on either side, you got one dead in the middle. And one, and one here, of course, for a double. They are tritium night sights. Gun shoots like a dream. Well, I did put a chrome extender, uh, the chrome extractor on it. Like I said, mostly all external, no external, no internal work done at all. Put that back in its holster. <clears throat> oh, and I don't even have it in here. Boy. <laughs> she doesn't live in here. She lives in there, so that... I always have her close to hand when I'm asleep. This is my full size. This is the Glock 22. Uh, most questions I get is about the Golden Barrel. This is a Lone Wolf, which is a good barrel. It's not the best on the market, mind you, but Barstow is probably one of the best ones out there. But Lone Wolf makes a damn good match grade barrel, which means this is a very this is a precision barrel for precision shooting. The length is two in extent is two inches longer than than standard. Uh, these right here are for this is what's called a ported barrel. As gases escape, they vent upwards help control muzzle flip. The coloration is uh, titanium nitride. It's what they put on you see drill bits in the store that are gold colored titanium nitride. It's extremely tough, extremely durable and it's also a very low friction kind of like almost like a metal Teflon which is why they're so good on drill bits because they're rugged the stuff don't wear out very easily and that low friction makes it makes it easier for the drill bit to get into the, whatever substance you're drilling into. So it's great for a gun. But hopefully one day I'll get the slide done. But and of course on top for sights I have the company called True Glow. They're True Glow TFOs, which is, stands for Tritium Fiber Optic. They are night sights. There's a tritium, the, the tritium sphere here, fiber optic. It captures light 
and channels it to either end of the fiber. So this end here gives you a really good sight picture, whatever your lighting conditions. You get a great sight picture on this, but on, the, on these sights, I absolutely love them. I went with the others on there because those are a smaller, lower profile sight for a concealed carry weapon. It's the only reason I actually put those on there. I'm a big fan of True Glow, as you're going to see. Now this, the weapon light is a 200 lumen light and green laser. It's a combo. The laser is actually built into the inside of the flashlight, not a separate outside unit. That is its pros and cons. Um, there's a couple of, you know, you, you have, I can press the button down and lock it, lock it on. Or I can just hold it up for it. As long as I hold it up, as I let go, it cuts off a little temporary feel. Uh, you have a switch here. Uh, as it sits, you get the green laser in the middle. There's your light. All the way up is both. I usually, I said the reason I have this. This is great for protection and being able to see what you're doing at night. Uh, when you buy one of these, 125 bucks for a weapons light. Uh, most of them stream light, crimson tracer, to you know, 250, 300 dollars and up. So 125 is a really good deal. It's a good unit. I've had it for a little while. No issues at all. Uh, straight on here. Was doing a uh, <clears throat> little target practice at, at 20 feet with it. And the laser didn't even need to adjust it. Tear the bullseye slap up at 20 feet with this. With the, just strictly using the laser, not even using the sights. Hip firing with the laser and just tearing, tearing the damn target up. Really like it. <clears throat> now you do get two of these. One of these. The other one is just this back piece here was is just the opposite for lefties. And they have one like I have on my AR, which is a pressure plate. On the externals, we have the extended takedown lever, of course, extended slide lock, take uh, your extended mag release in gold. I also have a polymer mag well, which makes it easier to get that magazine in there. They make those in aluminum and stainless steel that have weights that go up actually up inside here. They help control weight on the gun to make it a little bit heavier to help control recoil. I don't need that, so I just went with a polymer because I don't really want the weapon to be any heavier. And of course, my base plate does say Infidel. <coughs> And as a matter of fact, you go ahead and, uh, yeah, I keep all my weapons loaded because, folks, a, a gun without bullets is an odd shaped club, and ain't nobody but a damn fool brings a club out shaped or otherwise to a gunfight. Always make sure that you are unloaded. Now, now we'll lock her open. Now, you look on the back here, you can also see, yeah, Infidel slide cover. That's replaceable. Sweet. Lay this over here out of the way. Uh, some of the other things I've done to it, if you're looking to see all the gold, titanium safety plunger, it's got a titanium striker. Uh, the, you usually on this, they use a captured guide rod, which means you're, they use a captured spring, which means it's on a guide rod. Some like six hours, use just a straight spring. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, allergies. Now, this is a full-length on tungsten, full tungsten guide rod, which is a hell of a lot heavier than plastic. Uh, you don't really need to worry about how strong it is. It's just a spring. All it's doing is keeping the spring from bunching. So what it's made of, you know, basically thermoplastic is fine for the spring. It'll last forever. But the tungsten, what it's there for is to add weight to control muzzle flip. Then also with the ported barrel venting upwards to help, again, control muzzle flip. And I got to tell you, all this thing is, ooh, Olga is a bad, bad girl. And that's really all there is to take it down the Glock. You simply grab it with your hand here, pull back just a little bit. You're taking the pressure off of your takedown lever because your recoil spring is keeping the gun this way. So you just want to release that pressure. You pull down on this. And you pull the trigger. It comes right off. Now some people pull the trigger first, but I have actually, one night doing this while trying to watch TV and clean my pistol at the same time. Um... Did that and boom, slide fell off. <laughs> didn't hurt nothing, didn't hit me, didn't nothing horrible, nothing like that. It was just like, hmm, didn't like that. So now I make it a habit of I pull the trigger second and then remove the slide. And of course all you do is pull it back. Safety is of course built into the trigger. Now as far as the trigger goes, you see the gold trigger, silver safety. That's a pyramid trigger from Glockstore.com. I didn't get the full on meal deal for 200 some dollars. <clears throat> and the reason being I didn't want to spend 200 some dollars. Now, one of the benefits of this trigger, besides it being eye candy and matching the color scheme of gold and, of gold and silver, is that it has 
that you see over here is an adjustable trigger. What this does is when you pull the trigger on the pistol and you pull it, boom, it still has what's called over travel. It goes back a little bit. This gun here, she does not. It goes to right there, click, and it does not move no more. What that does is allow you to get it is four or five faster shooting. Now the trigger I have, the trigger system I have in here is from a company called Ghost. It's their Evo Elite three and a half pound tactical. You can go lighter than that for competition, but this is not a competition pistol. This is basically just a play pretty. So, and you have a chrome extractor there. <laughs> anyway, that uh, just makes it it just makes it a little bit more shootable for speed shooting. Get you a nice firm grip. Always get a firm grip. Both hands. Lock your elbows, lean forward to absorb the recoil. You don't want to do the loose bit. And the reason being that energy from the that energy is used to cycle your slide. Okay? If you if you do it loose, you're actually absorbing some of that energy and it does have the possibility of making it in the cycle improperly or you know basically a stovepipe, which you get stuck right here. It can happen, so you you want to lock the elbows. And it also allows you to, when that firm base allows it to operate perfectly and get you back on target quicker. <clears throat> and they practice and practice 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 yeah when I go out and shoot I drop typically five six hundred rounds I'm not anything less than that just really ain't worth my time just to be honest with you and of course my AR up there that's an Olympic arms she's got the infidel slack cover on the bow on the side on the side over here uh, another one of the true glow weapon lights uh, the red dot scope is a true glow true glow also it's about 80 bucks you know, is it as good as an EOTech? No, but it also doesn't cost three hundred dollars and up. You know, eighty bucks and you got a red dot. It has red and green reticles. You've got, I think, five different bright levels of brightness for each reticle. And on the bottom, you've got a piece down here at the bottom of the slide that gives you different sizes of reticles, all the way from a one, from a uh, one mil dot all the way up to a five. So it's a lot. It's really good. I, I used it extensively the last time I shot it. We dropped quite a few hundred rounds out of it, and absolutely fell in love with it. Of course, that is a uh, the foregrip is adjustable. See here, I've got the ATI Scorpion grip. <clears throat> that was about twenty bucks. The ATI Scorpion grip here has got a rubber back on it. Here that absorb helps absorb some of the felt recoil. It's about twenty bucks. The only thing I really got carried away with was when I bought my magazines. I did get mag pulls. They're uh, V3s. And as you can tell, yeah, they're lighted with uh, with lap rounds and light armor piercing. And single point sling. I did go ahead and spend a little bit extra and get a Blackhawk single point just because, hey, if you're going to, you know, decide what the heck, might well have something super nice on there. And of course, my little balaclava. If you can see my mask over here. My little uh, skeleton ski mask. Of course, I'm supposed to have contacts by now, but life stopped by and kicked me in the you-know-whats, and I ain't been able to do that yet. Hopefully, real soon. Uh, among the other goodies, of course, I've got a machete up here that I've had since I was a child. My dad got it when before I was born. Uh, my big black tanto right there, which is a Japanese fighting knife. I bought that when I was in high school. Still got it. There's a throwing knife. I got a little real bayonet up there. These are outside the waistband holsters, which is called a paddle style holster. Own your six designs. Pretty good for concealed if you got a shirt to hang down over it because it fits right up against you. Uh, made for each model. That's for my Glock 27. That's uh, it's a flat dark earth carbon fiber. They call it Crazy Coyote. This red one, of course, is for Olga the Olga the Infidel <clears throat> and the weapon light. That's uh, called that's a red carbon fiber and it's called uh, Blood Red Carbon Fiber. Uh, inside the waistband holster from On Your Six here, this is for Olga. Uh, I won't do a weapon light, but I bought this before I had before I bought the weapon light, so there you go. It works very well, very comfortable. I put this on here just because I'm a little trifle delicate and plastic on the skin I don't like. One of my other favorite inside your waistband holsters is a company called Alien Gear. This is their V1, the new V2 and V3 are supposed to be even better than this. And this is an extremely, extremely comfortable holster as well. I absolutely love them. Um, for holsters, these will all set you back around thirty, forty dollars a piece. And I bought these over the over time, and I buy them all at one time. And that's a little universal mag. I can put pretty much any magazine in that. It's a universal, so it, uh, a little. That's for the Glock 22, but it will fit uh, the 20s. My little 27 is available just fine. 
It's a little paddle holster. I can take this paddle off and put a belt piece on there. It's made by Phobos in Israel. Good little holster. A uh, utility belt over here with a, that's a Glock 23 holster on it. And there's the matching blood red carbon fiber from the magazines for Olga, all with Infidel on the backside. Yeah, I am an Infidel. I've decided to embrace my inner Infidel and enjoy it. Now, why do I use Glock? Because, hey, Glocks are just for the money. They're not, they're not the most expensive. They're not the cheapest, but they're not the most expensive. They're about the middle of the pack in price, but they're top of the line in reliability, and that's where you want it. That's what you're looking for, is reliability. And people talk about, well, it's got little gaps in the frame, you know, the bullet, the barrel's oversized, it's actually a little bit bigger than the bullet, you know, shooting it, you know, so you're not going to be very accurate. Yeah, these are, these are designed for military use, which sit in the holster and might not get service for quite a while and then can be drugged through hell, mud, muck, mire, dust, dirt, sand. But you pull them out, shake them, and if they try, they try to jam, bump them, shake them, dirt falls out of them. That's why the tolerances are there. AK-47, which does not stand for automatic killer, it fires 47 bullets per trigger pull. It stands for Alexander Kalishnikov, who designed the AK-47. People come up with some really weird crap on the internet. You'd be amazed at how anti-gun nuts come up with just blithering idiocy. Um, also, the polymer frame is for lightness. I know people, oh, Tupperware, no. They've been out 50, 60 years. Polymer frames are proven just as reliable as metal. If you want metal, go with metal. Don't care. I like polymer because they're lighter. They're not pretty, no, but then again, I don't buy any, I don't buy a gun based on how pretty it is. I, buy, I want reliability. That's first and foremost. Um, I don't buy a claw hammer because, it, because of its looks, or a drill. If you do, that's you. Me, I don't. This is a tool to me. So no, it's not pretty, but it's not ugly. It's just a gun. There are some out there that are super sexy, and I'd love to own them, but for everyday reliability, it's going to, I'm going to bet my life on, I want a Glock. The reason the barrel's a little bit oversized, exactly the same thing on a stock barrel. If you get a little dirt in there, it still fires. The thing about a Glock is it just shoots. It pretty much don't give a damn. It's just going to shoot. Uh, another thing, you don't even you don't even have to lube this gun. It doesn't like lube. When I clean it out, I break it down. I take a I take one of my brushes out of my cleaning kit and brush out the inside and blow it out. That's all I do to it. I take the barrel out. With a lot of shooting, I will pull like the firing pin, the plunger, and all that, and run a pipe cleaner through there with a little solvent on it, and let it dry. Or spray some Baristol in there if you have any Baristol works really well for that too. And let it dry, and clean it out a real bit, and you clean out your barrel. I don't even bother with uh, the steel brush bore snakes because I'm sh I'm not shooting lead bullets. I'm shooting jacketed uh, semi wad cutters out of it for targets, so you get very little lead fouling in your barrel. So there's no need to even do that. You just clean it out real good with solvent and a brush and a little, and a little uh, cotton pad until it comes out clean. Then you dry it out real good. You're good to go. And as far as oil, I put uh, one drop on the inside of the slide at the top where it's going to hit those rails. I put one on either side here and one on either side here. Work the slide for a little while to get it evenly distributed. That's it. I don't put nothing down here to attract dirt. Don't put any oil inside the safety plunger or any of that because that attracts, that'll stick dirt, cause dirt to stick to it too. And the Glock don't give it. Don't, it don't want to be lubed. It wants to be dry fired. <laughs> she wants to be fired like that. These guns take hell of a hell of, hell of, hell of abuse. That's why I love them. Not saying that uh, Walther PPQs, Kimber, uh, Smith and Wesson. You know, there's a lot of gun. There's a lot of manufacturers out there. Uh, Para makes a really good gun. Ruger, just an endless number now of gun manufacturers who are making weapons that are very good. I use Glock again because middle of the pack. I, they're 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 at a good price point, and they're just ultra reliable as far as your ultra ultra accuracy. When you get into a fight or flight situation, your brain's going to dump roughly over 30, 40 chemicals into your bloodstream. The most notorious of that is going to be adrenaline, which burns off your blood sugar levels. I don't like adrenaline personally because I'm hyper hypoglycemic and I have bad issues with low blood sugar. But that's why typically after something that causes you to go into this stage with all this adrenaline, you get the shakes. There's no way you're going to be able to drive nails in a life or death situation. When fight or flight kicks in, you're not going to be able to drive nails anyway. So a barrel like that's going to be perfectly acceptable. Is you're not going to notice the difference. Trust me, because you're not going to be able to make laser precise shooting like you can on the range anyway, because you're hyped up. The other one, that, the other famous one that dumps in there is endorphins, a natural pain inhibitor. Why people can take massive, massive wounds and still keep going, whether it's in a wreck or being shot. You hear people on the news been shot 15 times. Like, Why are they shoot him so many times? When you have massive amounts of endorphins and adrenaline and all these other chemicals flowing through your bloodstream. You literally don't feel the shots, 
They don't phase you. You literally will have to kill some, shoot somebody multiple times, even like a 45, 9 millimeter, 357 Sig, my beloved 40 cal, whatever, multiple times. Even in, normally you would have shot him that one shot, it hit him, and he drops like a like a brick. In fight or flight, he's got all these chemicals, his body's at max efficiency, and he's just burning and bursting with energy. And it might you might have to enter the whole damn magazine into him to bring him down. It happens. And that's one of the reasons. Also, if they're on narcotics, God only knows. They're on drugs. I don't know what the hell they own, then God knows. I mean, <laughs> you look at damn near Terminator robot. So just because somebody got shot multiple times didn't mean the cops went crazy and were just wanting to shoot the guy. Sometimes you shoot a guy multiple times, you're going bam, bam. You go boom, boom, and he don't stop. You're going to keep shooting. I mean, life or death, you're going to sit here and you're going to start shooting and you're not going to stop until, the until your opponent goes down. The person trying to kill you goes down. That's when you're going to stop shooting. And if they don't go down, you're going to keep shooting. And also remember, again, you can't, you know, there's a video out where you can see uh, two cops pull over two guys in a van. They're white supremacists. They're nut jobs who think uh, whatever. And, you know, they're crazy as hell. They get into a big gunfight right there on the side of the road. And all four of them are shooting at each other. Two on this side, two on this side. And they're just, ah! I mean, they're just, it's like a young war. How many people got hit? None. Nobody hit anybody. And they were 10 feet away from each other. The guy was at the front of the van. The cop was at the door to his car. Or right there at the front of the car. That's how close they were. You're talking eight, ten feet maybe. Probably less than that. And probably around six to eight feet. And these people are just ah! And the cops doing the full they're they're all doing the full on and we were just ah! and, they, and nobody hit nobody. They shot the van and the police car all the shit. Bullets everywhere. Nobody got hit. That's why you don't have to worry about a laser accuracy, folks. You're gonna be lucky if you hit them anyway. The yeah, statistics on on an enforcement shooting for law enforcement is three out of ten rounds actually hit the subject. And that's not counting fatalities, instantly fatal or potentially, even potentially fatal. That's just three hits, leg, arm, hand. The young kid here a lot too long ago got in a car chase, pulled a gun on the cops, they shot him, they shot him in the hand. And the reason for that is we tend to focus, and our focus is on the danger, and sometimes we focus the gun is what's dangerous. So when you go into this, there's no conscious thoughts. You focus in the, on shooting the danger, which is the gun, so the guy was like, probably aiming at the gun, and he hit the kid in the hand. A lot of people don't understand that. You, you revert to your highest level of training, folks. Why you got to train, train, train. One more thing before I go. Some cops in uh, California, California Highway Patrol, the Chips, back in the, it was around the 70s, they were using revolvers, got into a shootout. Two cops, they both got killed. Upon investigation, they found out that they're both are speed loaders, which with a revolver, you pop it out, speed loader, you press the button, and bullets drop in. It's a lot faster than doing it individually. The speed loaders are still in their hip. Bullets in their pocket, they had empty brass shells in their pocket. Out on the ground in their pockets, and they were both dead. And they could figure out why, what the hell, this didn't make sense. Why wouldn't they use their speed loaders and drop the scrap on the ground? I don't make no sense. Go to the shooting range, what are they doing? They don't want to drop them on the ground because then you got to pick them up. It's much easier to jump them in your hand, put them in your pocket, and load them out of your pocket because if you do the speed loader, then you got to turn around and reload your speed loader. It's just human nature. Not saying cops are lazy, people in general are lazy. We take the path of least resistance. So, what they did, what they do, that's how they train themselves. You revert to that. Because conscious thought goes out the window. What you're going to do is, bam, bam, and you fire your five or six rounds. You're going to dump them in your hand, put them in your pocket, pull them out here, and load back here. Because you're not, you're not thinking. You're going on instinct at this point. Fight or flight is in. Your higher brain is cut, pretty much shut off, and you're running on the lizard. You're running on training. After that, they told them, hell no. From now on, this is how you train. Dump them on the ground, speed load. Do your shooting. Rinse and repeat until you run out. Then sit down, pick up all your holes, reload your speed. Go back to it. That's how they train. So the next time this happens, when you do it, you'll... You see? Training, 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 people. And yep, the reason I use the 40 cal, it's a good solid round. It's very fast. I tend to go between, you know, people talking about faster the round or the bigger the round, the better. I tend to go in the middle. This is These are Hornady 165 grain, critical defense. Critical def uh, your critical defense expend almost all of their energy on impact. They're a softer lead. Your critical duty is what the police use and they, that's for penetration. Shooting through car windows, walls, what have you. You really don't want that. You're going to want a critical defense because if you shoot into a crowd, you're responsible for every bullet that leaves a gun so you don't want to kill anybody but the person you're trying to kill. In other words, you don't want to hit his buddy or somebody over here that had nothing to do with it because you're going to get charged with murder. Straight up. Alright, that was just a few questions some people had they sent to me. Thought I'd give them to you. Take it for what little is worth. I'm no guru. I'm just your average guy. I'm just your average dude. Nothing special. Nothing great. Nothing magnificent. I'm just me. Um, not going to find anybody to argue with that, I guarantee you. So y'all be blessed. Have a good one. 
Keep your powder dry, stay, keep her loaded, keep her on you at all times. Do what I did. If your state requires you get a concealed carry permit, which I have done. Get out, practice as much as you can so that you can protect yourself because you don't know the cops coming. Is he any good with his weapon? He might not have shot it in six months. He might not be a lousy shot. He might be a coward. He, he's coming in to stop the perpetrator. He ain't coming to save you. You don't know where is he? Is he right next door? Is he on the other side of town? What is he going to do when he gets there? See, you, there's too many variables. You're trusting somebody that you don't know. And I'm not speaking bad about cops. I'm just stating facts. You don't know what's going to happen. So don't trust somebody else. Your life with somebody you don't even know. You don't know how they're, where, who they are, where they are, how long it's going to take them to get to you, and how they're going to respond when they do finally get there. Not saying that you should get up and go to shooting. No, the first thing you do is formulate a plan. Everywhere you go, check out your ex exits. Get your back to the wall. Don't sit in the middle of the restaurant. That's the barrel. That's where they all go. That's the killing ground. That's where the lunatics are going to start at is right in the middle. Because you're an easy target. Get over here on the wall. Watch people. Know your exits. Plan this scenario out in your head so you're all prepared so that you don't trip out and go, what's going on? You know what's going on. Bam, you have to get up and start moving. Run away from the gunfire. Your job is to protect the people you love. Not go ahead, not go chasing this dude. Don't bother to hide unless you absolutely, there's just no way out of there. Don't hide because he's looking for you. He's going to be knocking on doors going, kill me. So you'll open the doors and kill you. No, get the hell out. Take the people you love. Let them out first. You follow out with your gun. Make sure they're okay. And you get the hell out and stay out. Get the hell out and stay out. Call the police. Don't assume somebody else is. Call the cops. Be on the phone. After you get out, though, make sure they're safe. And you can get on the phone. Hey, there's a shooting. Give them all the information you can. Stay on the line if they need you to. The only time you will engage the subject if he comes into the room after you. Because if you go out after him, what if his buddy runs in? Nobody to protect your family. What if he kills you and takes your gun and he comes in here? Again, your friends, your family, whatever, are undefended. Your job is to protect them. Don't go after him. If he comes into the room... Be prepared. Have your weapon drawn. You hear the shooting is coming from here. Then you definitely want to come up. I would do this. I'm coming forward with a full-on with a full-on stance, arms locked. I'm ready. If he don't come through there, that's fine. I hope he don't, because I don't want to go after him. I'm not Rambo. I'm not bulletproof. This ain't the 18. I'm going out the window. Out the door. Bust out a window in the restaurant. Whatever. Get the hell out. And I'm staying out. The cops can deal with that crazy bastard. Sounds cold. Sorry. You're not my responsibility. I'm not gonna get killed. And have them say, oh, the concealed carry guy went there and got a bunch of people killed. No, I got the hell out just like you did. It's just that I can defend myself. I can at least argue with the bastard if I get a chance. And now, I'm going to shut the hell up and get up out of here. It's time to sit you know, look at him like I got a watch on. I'm about to go sit down. And I do believe I'm going to play either Black Ops 3 or the PlayStation 4. Or I'm going to hit Destiny. Knowing me, probably Destiny. I love being a Titan. It's invigorating. So until next time, y'all have fun and remember, hey folks, be safe, keep your powder dry, always be village, always be vigilant, put your cell phone in your damn pocket, don't be walking through the parking lot looking, keep your eyes moving, be prepared, When because when, when the balloon pops, it's not going to stop by and tap you on the warning and give you a little, stop by and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey look dude, all hell's fixing to break loose, you might want to pay attention. Life ain't like that folks, okay, so y'all be good. Keep your powder dry. Be safe out there. Much love for you. Peace. And some of that there cornbread.